Good day guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time, please do not forget to like and subscribe. So um, in this video, we are going to talk about handling alerts in Cypress in details. So in the previous video, I've already established that um, when you want to create an alert, in Cypress handles alerts differently in, in um, it handles a lot differently in its um, codes by already automatically taking the alert. So how do we now verify what the alert message is? I will show us by using these simple steps. First of all, I'll copy the message in the alert because we are going to verify that. Um, let me return this here. And um, Let's get on with it. So we use this command cy.on. It is different from cypress.on, but we'll um, discuss it a bit now. So we have a Windows alert. That's what we want to handle. Then we can call the content of the alerts, maybe message, give it a variable because that was all we need. And then uh, we create the regular function. And um, what we want to do now is just expect that that message that we just copied, let me just, so I'll just change the content here so we can verify that the message that we copied is here. Oh, close it. The message we copied, which is this one, is verified. So we check if this would run. As you can see, it's running right now. And it has verified the alert message for us. So we can go on and try to do the rest of the code. I mean, the rest of the script where we have to create an account. But at this point, I expect that we might run into an error and I will explain what the error is. So let's quickly write the code that we need. Let's copy three things here and use it to replace this. Then the click button again, let me copy it and replace this. Okay. I might just use this because it's the same button that would click the process. So now let's get the right field. If we come here, you know that what we need here, let me inspect, is a select tag because it is a drop down. It has a select tag on it, it's a drop down. And the second one too is a select tag and it also has values in it, just like this other one too has values in it. So what we need to do right now is show you how we can select in Cypress. So what we need to do is get that select tag ID, which we have already gotten here as customer list and currency list. So I'm going to go ahead and put this there, customer list and also currency list. Now, instead of typing, what we'll be doing is we'll be selecting, right? So this time around, what are we going to be selecting? Let me change this one to, to select. So in this case, we will be selecting a currency here. So we can name this one, we can just change this one to pound. I forgot to add it to the um, selectors page, but it's okay. You can write it out there or we can quickly just add it and say maybe currency and um, we call that pound and don't forget the comma here because you are listing it so we can change this one to currency now the thing about the name if you check when you come to the tag it brings the first name and the last name together so which means we will need a way to select it by that because this selection would not work for us right now. So what we need to do is something called concatenation in programming. So we would uh, join the two names together. That's the first name and the last name. We'll join them together with the plus sign. I am putting a space in between here to represent the space between the names, just as it has been represented here. So that means I will now add the last name here and that should work for us. That should select 
what we need but i don't expect this to work and i'll explain in a bit but let us see it on the cypress test so as you can see it has gotten the select okay let's rerun this as you can see oh we 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 have an error here we haven't changed the customer button so we need to change that to a create account button so we add that here so it will not be create it will not be clicking the add customer anymore so let's see again let's run this again and see now this is the error I was talking about. It has selected the, this, but it, it cannot find John Gomez there. Now, this is because each time the page, because we have a hook here, the before each hook loads the page before any of the it block runs. So when this was loaded for the first time and we created a customer, it created successfully, yes. And it loaded the second time to do a create account. It loaded successfully, but what was done here was not saved. It became a fresh session. So it was looking for something that had not been saved. So how do we address this? We would first address it by trying to change the hook to a before. So which means the page will only load once and the activities will continue. So let's see if this would handle the case for us. It looks like it's not handling the case for us. Let's run it again from the scratch. It has created that, but the page is not loading anymore. So it means that when Cypress finished this test, it actually killed that session. So our options here, our options are either find a way to keep that session alive so that the page continues because it, the application is like a single page application. You can continue that way. So it's either we find that or we write the code right now as just one it block. So which means in that same session, everything is created. So for now, for the sake of this class, I will finish everything in one it block. So I'm going to cut this away and I'm going to paste it here while I disable this for now. And the delete tool will be disabled much later, but let's see if we get a desired result this time around. Let's run it all over again and see. Yes, and we've been able to we've been able to select John Gomez and we've been able to select pound and we've been able to click. But we see an error here that is ignored because we have a window alert that we've um we've initially verified here so that window alert has returned here trying to verify the same window alert so how do we handle this because the window alert here has a different message and which is this message so what we can do is one of the easy things that we can do is copy this message to copy this message and come here turn this into a list which will include that message as well turn it into a list so we paste this message here and um, we we cut this out we just in, we swap it we swap it and we put message here then inside this place we drop that list. So we, we are now saying that expect that this list should contain whatever alert message is available. So let's see if this would undo the error for us. Let's run it all over again. Let's see. It has selected and it has created. So let's look at it. So in the first instance, yes, as you can see, it checks that inside the array, this message is contained. And in the final instance, it's also checked that inside the array, that message is contained. So we've been able to handle the alert in both ways. So in the next video, I will, I will finish. I think we can still rush it through. 
So let us remove this two and um, complete the delete. So let's let's um, try to complete the delete. So it means that at this point, what we need to do is come here. We can scroll down to the particular user we have created with the account to delete it, or we can first search for the cost for that particular account here. And let's say what well, let's give it a Kylie. Let's use Kylie as an instance. So we have Kylie here. You see, it narrows it down. And once it has narrowed it down, we can just click the delete button. So this is the action that I will follow right now. So what we'll do is um, click on customers. Let's copy something that we've used before. So we click on customers and we bring that here. So when we click on, we change that one to customer list button. So we click on the customer list button here. And when we click on that, there's also a search field. We will get into the search field and probably just type the first name. And this should bring out the first name. And the next thing is we should click the delete button. Right? So what's the delete button? Yeah, we have that saved as well. And we click the delete button. So this should end the test and delete the button for us. So let's see. Yeah, I think it has happened. Let's run it again all over again. It has created the user and it has searched for the user and deleted the user. This time around, there is no alert message to show that the user has been deleted. Then how do we now verify that the user has been deleted? In order to verify that the user has been deleted, we can just verify that when we have the old list, which means if we clear this, it means we can clear this and verify that that particular name is not on the page. The name we just, um, we, we just removed is not on the page. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is because is and is by putting in the full name and see that that name is in there. But that too, those two methods might be um, erroneous because two customers can have the same name and more than one customer can have the same first name or the same last name or the same full name. So it means that when you want to do this on your own, you can search by the unique account number that has been created for the user because account numbers will be unique postcodes could be the same because they could be siblings so you 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 look for a unique value that is a uh, particular to that user use it to search when that use when that um when that particular uh, unique value returns null or returns an empty result it means that you've been able to successfully delete so the old method that you want to use is entirely up to you when you want to verify that. So what I'm trying to say basically is that depending on how you understand your tests, when you've tested manually, you can decide to resolve your verifications the way you see fit. If you've gotten this far, please do not forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.